All right. <clears throat> got myself. We've got Alex. We've got Mr. Steve Stoning and Hello, it's Dad Click Friday. <laughs> oh God. Come and on, we've got on, Ryan on Everson street. from Gorber Automotive. Uh, welcome, Ryan. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Fantastic. Steve, we should probably welcome you as well. You haven't been on for a while. Uh, no, in fact, uh, but let's be very, very clear. When you got rid of me, <laughs> your ratings went up. <laughs> it did, they did. I, like Shut by him five, off right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, look, listen, I, I can see how low the audience is, and I know the boss. <laughs> I can appreciate that. I think the only reason they had you back was because they knew there was a scheduling conflict with Stan. <laughs> he was going to the doctor. <laughs> now we just couldn't get past the uh, the brick wall behind him. <laughs> that is uh, that is hardcore brick. This is, this oh, yeah. brick wall is as real as most trainers in automotive. <laughs> I did not go there. Yeah, you did. That was nasty. Hit early, didn't I? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Industry news. What's the latest? Uh, I heard that Dominion's making some waves. They've, uh, they're reselling, um, or maybe white labeling, whatever. Um, the old, older iMagic Lab dealer CRM suite, right? I feel like I just heard that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's called CRM suite now. And Sweet. shout out to old Keith Latman. Good old Keith. Yeah. Do you still have a picture of him? Yeah, I do. Somewhere. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I'll pull it up. <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> All right. Hey, great. So, yeah, so, on the heels of CRM Suite being the licensed tool for Dominion, uh, they had also announced a cloud-based DMS system. So, Dominion seems to be uh, up in their game quite a bit now. So, what are they doing with all that? What do you mean cloud-based CRM system? DMS. I just read the press release, man. All right, I will. Sorry. <laughs> so there, yeah. So it's all I they said cloud-based DMS. Uh, I, <laughs> I tried to reach out uh, to them on uh, and try to understand, you know, because I I want you to be able to recommend it to my dealers I work with, and they're not quite ready. It's not as as rollout ready as as I think their press release made that sound. They're sort of still in beta test with a couple of dealers on their cloud-based DMS. You know, we usually see this for every um, every uh, NADA, right? Everybody's got to get these press releases out before NADA. I think they rushed on the cloud-based DMS one. I'm not sure. So almost a almost the kind of move a publicly traded company might do. So, hmm. yeah. Well, here's Adam Ross asking some questions. And here we go. Web Sorry. And <laughs> oh yeah, there's Keith. <laughs> I, I swear to you, mine is my Facebook is frozen. Yeah, Keith with his uh, Jason Bourne pick. <laughs> <laughs> he was a little upset. Sent me a text when he saw the photo. What did he say? Well, maybe he wasn't upset. He thought it was pretty funny, and I did throw out to him that if he sent us a new one, I'd replace it for him. <laughs> <laughs> I would replace that. If that that was he my did photo. not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he shaved about twenty years off here. <laughs> <clears throat> what else is in the news? Um, what did Cliff Banks? We always give Cliff a shout out. <clears throat> yeah, well, we've got more DMS news. So mm -hmm. after see. Dominion announced their cloud-based DMS. Um, it's cloud-based. No. Yeah, yeah, cloud-based. Uh, good thing it's cloud-based. somewhere else. Uh, so uh, CDK's got some news saying that they too, is it cloud-based? Does it say in there, cloud-based? I think it is. I'm sure it is. Gosh, right. we do server-based DM, DMS. Oh, there it is. Amazon Web Services Cloud Platform. Oh, yeah, it's cloud-based, too. You got to check that box. But uh, CDK is <laughs> doing it more, um, according to Cliff, as a uh, single point solution because that's uh, a marketplace they don't do so well in. And a marketplace they pissed off when they um, were forcing everyone to sign their new agreements or move on. And uh, there are a lot of the single point folks that we're looking at, um, dealer track and others, uh, other DMS that were much cheaper. So they had to come out with this sort of lower tier DMS or, uh, or risk losing that customer base. Yeah, it's a lot easier to switch from, uh, you know, if you're a single point 
you, uh, it's easier to switch DMSs as a single point than it is if you're a dealer yeah. such as Ryan. It's, it's, yep. Yeah, but it's still never easy. No, no, of course not. I think this will probably hurt like uh, AutoSoft the most because I tend to see that in a lot of smaller stores. Yep. yep. Well, that's, and you come from that background. We didn't know that. We're, Let's let's learn yeah. about Ryan uh, just very quickly. <laughs> Ryan, uh, Northwoods grad, right? But but why'd you go to Northwoods, Ryan? Yep. So um, when I was in high school, I didn't really want to go to college at first. Um, so I took my uh, DECA business plan and started my own uh, technology business. Ran that for two or three years. Um, sold that, and then decided to go to college. Uh, uh, some of my family owns some buy here pay here car dealerships, so Northwood was kind of the go to um, it was only an hour away so I started going there I uh, had to get an internship um, as a sophomore I believe and uh, hooked up with um, someone I knew at Garber about seven eight years ago and it's supposed to be just a summer internship they didn't really believe in the internet that much back then uh, <laughs> <laughs> so really so revamped them. and now and you're so old yeah <laughs> 27 oh my god I have underwear older than you. <laughs> <laughs> T of I, T of I. That, that you still wear? <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah, of course. What, what are you, crazy? You find a good pair, you can't get rid of it. No? <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? They're like dad shoes, right? They're like those white dad shoes we all have. I, I don't know where we can go from here. We're done. Yeah, well, thanks. Uh, thanks for joining us. My Facebook is frozen, so I don't. I don't see the comments. By the way, I, I don't understand. So make sure you guys read those for me. By the way, those of you who are watching us on Facebook, like and share so that your friends can see what you're interested in and start questioning your sanity. <laughs> yeah, especially with Steve on. So in other news, yeah, Alex, you had a quick plug, right? I do. Reach out to um, Elise Kleppart who is trying something a little different. You know, Elise is uh, more of a video and, and social media specialist, and she's going to share her knowledge with, uh, with anybody who cares to get it for only $399. Um, uh, and I think that deal. price yep. ends today. Yep, so. that's right. It did change, yeah. Wow. Well, take that back. No, I think tomorrow <laughs> is when the price changes. Okay, so tomorrow, so get in there now if you want to go today, to San yeah. Diego and spend some time with Elise. That's right. And I want to give Elise a quick plug. We had uh, some of our salespeople. Um, we had one at our store up here in Michigan. She was mm -hmm. doing a respectful 9% of internet leads um, closing ratio. Um, and then she spent some time on the phone uh, with Elise, started using the Bomb Bomb app, and she went up to 17% last month closing rate. Very nice. Wow, that that is a, that's, that's a hell of a plug. Twice that's the only thing she changed and it wasn't just one month she's been doing that for two three months now that's awesome that's a neat little app too bomb bomb yeah yeah it is good there's also another app in the industry called walk around video oh that's right that does what do they do i don't know if it does the same features but it uh it's definitely a powerful little program app <laughs> we've tried some of the other ones like yeah. co video and i think the other one's called like in page or something I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, but Bomb Bomb seems to be the easiest to use. That's affordable. Yeah, we should bring Bomb Bomb and maybe walk around video on for a show. That'd be good. Absolutely. So what else? Uh, Carvana. What's what's this news around Carvana? Everyone's going ape shit. <laughs> you mean? So they, maybe uh, we should start with how you pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> I do it on purpose. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, yeah. They, they Carvana, don't really Carvana. We're going to call him Carvana for the rest Carvana. of this show. Uh, Carvana uh, reported some pretty crappy numbers, according to the street, for, um, for the fourth quarter. But the big news really is uh, when you start to dive into the numbers, uh, Cliff Banks and Joe Pistel both sort of uh, peeled back the numbers a little bit. Cliff Banks reports that uh, the average uh, Carvana employee represents about $460,000 in sales, annual sales, where the uh, that number is uh, what eight hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars on average per employee for the six publicly traded companies, and so when we talk about efficiencies that this uh, that they're supposed to be bringing to the market, um, they're not really there. So they have added costs like pickup, delivery, vending machines, 
Um, they claim to have wiped out all the overhead that your, these inefficient dealers are using, like salespeople. Um, and yet their cost per sale is much higher than, than dealers. And, um, and then Joe Pistel's numbers, just to uh, give him a quick plug, you know, he, he found out that their average turn in the fourth quarter was 72 days. Um, that's five inventory turns a year. You can't be an efficient used car retailer and have, uh, you know, fewer than 12 turns a year. And they're sitting at five last quarter. So um, they are not the panacea for all things used cars. And, I, and I, my biggest point for them is, um, is that the used car market in America is already efficient, right? More than, what, 40 million auction and retail More. transactions a year. More than what most people are aware of, for sure. Yeah, and, and so, there, I mean, there's no more efficient market than an auction, right? And, and used cars are, uh, are, they go through that. I mean, there's, we've had pricing transparency in used cars for a decade, right? And, uh, and the fact is, is that th there's no more profit to be squeezed out to the bottom line through these alleged efficiencies. So they're, they're struggling. Yeah, do you think yeah, of that. Maybe they're just like building the foundation in order to scale up. And as they scale, it'll start becoming a little bit more profitable. Well, that's, 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 that's the that's, idea. That's what they're telling the, the uh, shareholders. <laughs> yeah. So, so are they going to become the Amazon, you know, Amazon.com and get past that, you know, and people are going to keep pumping money into it because they're going to keep believing Ernie Garcia, or are they going to be pets.com, right? And just one day run out of money because they've never turned a profit. Here's, here's the thing to think about, and that is uh, two things on retailing autos, uh, sight unseen, which is what they do. Um, it's a very small percent of the population that wants to do that. The two things to think about, one is eBay Motors. People have been able to do it on eBay Motors for more than a decade, yet eBay Motors is a speck, a tiny speck mm -hmm. of the market. But here's the other thing. When we think about Amazon, we think, oh my God, they're so huge. You know, everybody's buying everything online. No one, sorry, everybody's buying everything online. No, no one is, no one is going to, um, no one's going to be buying cars in person. They're going to do it online. Even today, it's less than, if it's about 9% right now of total retail sales are done online. 9%. So when will it be 9% of cars are sold online? And, and why do we assume it's going to be Carvana that gets to do that? Any dealer in the country today can join up with an Autofy or a Roadster and sell cars online, sight unseen, pick up and delivery, just like Carvana does. So where is their advantage? There is no advantage. because Well, no Steve, yesterday we were speaking and you had mentioned, um, what was that, Texas Direct? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> right. I dropped my. Oh boy, I just dropped an F bomb too. Well, the bat, now I got to put my battery on the charger. Dang. Anyway, didn't even. I'm gonna call you on that phone someday. Hey, Zach Morris. What's the, what's the number of that? <laughs> so uh, hold on, I'll text you the number. So um, yeah, so so Vroom people don't realize Vroom bought uh, Texas Direct Auto a few yeah. not a few years ago, about a year ago, maybe a little more. And uh, I really thought that Vroom was going to become the non BP. You know, they were just like BP. They were going to do this peer to peer sales. Um, and, and they were going to uh, uh, implode just like BP did. And then they bought Texas Direct, which was a smart move because here you've got this efficient retailer who, you know, they, they, uh, they buy better than the average dealer, they, they recon better than the average dealer. And their retailing and their turn is just so much faster than the average dealer. And so it looked like Vroom had kind of figured out the secret sauce, this sort of blend of online offline. And I mean, to use your term that you said earlier, Jeff, it's a shit show at Vroom. They just laid off like 50 people across a couple of markets um, and it's not looking good. And their online reviews, somebody mentioned uh, on a LinkedIn post or on uh, rather on our post on dealer refresh. Um, their, their reviews are terrible. Consumers do really? not like that experience. Yeah. Somebody said they were averaging like two and a half stars out of five. Yeah. yeah. If you Google Carvana, the second organic result is from some site I never heard of, but there's literally hundreds of reviews and they have like a 2.5. Oh, wow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But wouldn't anybody who's been in retail sold cars before, let's say, uh, know that 
buyers are, you know, super rational. They make all the perfect <laughs> decisions when they buy a car. They, they don't get crazy. They know about exactly what they, they don't care about wheels. You know, we all drive Hyundai accents because we're very rational when right. we buy cars. Same way we buy toilet paper. Nobody needs to touch it or drive it or anything like that, right? Right. Yeah, okay. and I think if you yeah. read somewhere. And, and they always purchase the vehicle that they set out to buy when they come into the Oh, yeah, that's every a, single yeah, time. Yeah, that one too. Every single time. But if you it read when the they reviews, meet sales, the salesperson who shows, <laughs> shows them something different. What's that, Ryan? Why don't you guys quit cutting off Ryan? <laughs> Ryan has something to say. <laughs> <I have> something <laughs> to say. <laughs> but if you guys go and read some of the reviews, it kind of like eliminates their main selling point as being transparent. Like all the reviews say, um, yes, it notated this scratch and this scratch, but there was these other scratches or this Holy 10. Shit. <laughs> oh. It's just like, how do you, the trust is gone. Wow. You know, make no mistake, um, Carvana, Carvana, Carvana is, is already successful in, in what I think they set out to do, which is to be a $2 billion company and make money for the shareholders, the original you know, owners. I, I don't think that they are long for this world in the way that they are right now. You know, again, no barrier to entry. And then you've got these little startups like Carrite. I don't know if you've seen these guys yet. C-A-R-I-T-E. Don, um, Don Foss from Credit Acceptance started that. Yeah, they, they're doing it the right way. They're, they, they are the same sort of thing. No hassle, no haggle, come on in. But it's a physical location where people can kick the tires and walk around and no pressure and that kind of thing. And, you know, I mean, it, they're, they're, they, they're not going to lose money on every vehicle like Carvana is doing right now. So. Yeah, the big difference is car rights a franchise model. So it's like, right. Yeah. Speaking yep. of, uh, of losing money, there was an interesting stat thrown out in the forums by, is it NAB that? Not sure exactly. Nab that. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Jason from NAB that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he was saying that they, his company started off trying to do the same thing. And uh, they were basically um, coming up at about $1,000 per vehicle sold in marketing costs alone, just trying to uh, acquire a, a shopper. Yep. And that's, e. yeah. And, and I want to completely rule them out because um, they come from drive time. If you guys have heard from that. Mm -hmm. They have about 120 dealerships. They're one of our biggest competitors in the subprime space, and they've just exploded in growth. So I wrote uh, a year ago how they might succeed, and, and a couple of things. One is I think they need to have showrooms. I think they need to have that ability for people to come in and kick the tires. I think that'll help them succeed. And then two, I think they need to look at a way to bring in fixed stops because – the, the margins are not going to grow on used cars, right? I think we can all agree. They're never coming back to where they were on used cars. It's just not going to happen. And you cannot make your living going to the lanes and overpaying for late model used cars because you don't have an OEM that's taking you to a private sale, right? So they can't go to the GM's private sale and get the off-lease vehicles. And they don't, they're, the trades that they get are junk, right? Nobody's going to buy a 15 Silverado from them and trade in a 17 F-150, right? They're trading in an 08 F-150 with 300,000 miles on it. And that's just not something Carvana is going to resell. So they have to go to the auction for everything they get. And pay over. And yep, and pay over. So there you go. And so Speaking if we of, were to sum up where Carvana's issues are, and just a, a little list of details, because Rick Buffkin's asking, can we do anything Rick asked for? <laughs> <laughs> My, uh, my first uh, point is going, is going to be that they, um, although they come from used cars, they, they overestimated the efficiency that can be squeezed out of the used car transaction. So it, it, there's just not three grand per car that can be squeezed out. You know, if anybody got close, it was Texas Direct Auto. So Speaking of expensive, Auto Trader, Car Gurus, Attribution, I think Ryan, you've got uh, a bit, a few things to say on this, right? Yeah. So um, one thing we spend about two or three million dollars a year on uh, the three big third parties, and uh, we really started looking at it in the past six months in terms of analyzing the um, KPIs. And what we really look at is how many VDP views are we getting? Mm -hmm. uh, what are SRP to our VDP to SRP impression um, view rate is? And then, uh, 
and just looking at that and our cost per VDP, so dividing it by our subscription cost. And we found that typically CarGurus is our best performing, um, then Cars.com, and then AutoTrader. So AutoTrader offered us these uh, transparency. And oh, the transparency reports? Yeah. Where they claim 200% of your sales? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we gave them access to our DMS data. And um, mm. so I guess they have some sort of way to match a street address to an IP address. Uh -huh. And uh, they look at their data from all of their KBB and auto trader sites and say 77% of our customers um, that we sold were at on this Chevrolet Linwood. Yep. Okay. So they were able to match 85% of that, which means they were able to find IP addresses of 85% of our sold customers. And then that's an impressive report. That is. Yeah. So did you immediately cancel every other digital marketing vendor <laughs> that you had? And no. so, well, you're, I mean, you might as well, right? If they're 77% of your business, holy crap. Yeah. Why I advertise on that attribution thing? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I went into this expecting to see like a 30%, maybe 40% match rate. So this, we just like instantly discounted it. Um, and they ran it on some of our other stores. Um, so we have like 17 franchise stores and then about 30 um, subprime used car lots. And they ran it on some of our stores that weren't signed up. And this is one of them. You mean, hold on, they're not on Auto Trader? Yep, they're not on Auto Trader, not on Or Or do they at least have like the free version or something? No, not on it at all. Vehicles are not on Auto Trader. Correct. So this well, then why is, why is there an 80 plus percent match? Yeah, that's what we asked. <laughs> we didn't know. If, <laughs> so there's one of two scenarios either one, the data is completely. Yes. <laughs> you sent them data, bad data. It never happens. Bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, data, it's never the data. Yeah. <laughs> or two, our customers are visiting there regardless of whether we're advertising or not. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, what yeah, I really yeah. hoped is if they could have matched it to, let's say, thirty percent of the cars that we sold looked at a VDP of ours, but they couldn't drill it down. Yeah, so my my issue with attribution, regardless of who we're we're talking about, when it is a what should be a what I'll call a lead driving website like Auto Trader, yep. um, and they tell me whether it's AutoTraderCars.com, doesn't matter who's ever who's ever touting attribution, and they say, look, your customers are coming to us before they end up to, at your website and then submit a lead or buy a car or whatever, um, so therefore you should spend more money with us. My pushback on that is, you know, you're not the newspaper. You're, you, you are what I consider to be a lead or opportunity driving machine. And if you let my customer come to your site and not submit a form and not call me, then you fail, right? Don't tell me later that I got lucky that they showed up at my dealership and bought a car. I mean, it's, it, I, I struggle with giving them, quote, unquote, an assist in these cases. Well, one of the things they could do outside of just going for leads, because we know how few visitors actually do that, is more of a transition over to your website. So sure. basically a click through, that would be fantastic. And now that they have dealer.com, they could do something like that, couldn't they? What would they charge for a click through though? Well, auto trader, it's like 80 yeah. grand. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think no. I think our gurus is doing something. They're doing it per VDP. That's their new pricing structure is uh, per VDP view. Yeah, and I mean, I mean honestly, you, know, you can't take a VDP I'm view. So right, you couldn't you couldn't program a bot to do a VDP <laughs> view. So. Well, no, not at all. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if I trusted them, that's the way that I would want to pay because we've been paying the same if amount. If there weren't bots. Yeah, if there weren't bots. But we've been paying the same amount uh, for AutoTrader five years ago as we are today. And when you look at even the Google Trends or VDP views, AutoTrader's just declined in popularity, whereas CarGuru is way up. So instead of having to always negotiate, we could get CarGuru to pay, uh, pay on performance. So our monthly expense with them is going to go up where AutoTrader is going to go down. Popularity from a branding standpoint or just from an organic listing uh, I'd say it's both. I mean, most of it probably is geared by organic. I mean, when you Google any used yeah. car in the U.S., our group is always number one or two. That's why I was asking. Yep. So, and you had, uh, what, with the, some Oracle data? 
Yep, so this is uh, for Facebook. We're going to talk a little bit about Facebook ads. Um, so everybody knows that there's bulk data and all that where you can target down to like the body type or make level. From what I gather, Oracle is the schnizzle. Yeah, it is. And um, I always heard from all these ad agencies that um, they could target down to the model level. I even asked our own ad agency how to get access and they're like, you can't do it. <laughs> and then uh, come to find out I met someone from Oracle and mm -hmm. they said, oh yeah, those audiences are free. Now we can target every single audience down to the model level. So they get a lot of their data from Edmunds, um, just a bunch of sources. So we can create an ad for Toyota Camry. Before we could only show it to people in the market by Toyota. Now we can show it just to people in the market by Toyota Camry. So it's really powerful and it's free. Any, any results that you can report back? Yeah, I mean, our relevancy score um, is the biggest thing that determines cost. Um, and that, I mean, before when we were targeting just generic makes, we were averaging like a two, three, four relevancy score. A lot of it depends on the offer. But now that we're targeting um, the model level, we're seeing a relevancy score of like seven or eight. Um, which doesn't necessarily result in more clicks, but it results in a lot lower cost per click. So we yeah, <laughs> we're, we're using, um, <laughs> I guess this is sort of a plug, but I, we use a company, Dominion, for our social, uh, for paid. And our cost per click is just extremely low. Yeah. And, and the results are fantastic. So that yeah. and I think it, a lot of it piggybacks on that data that Oracle was able to supply. Yep. And the nice part about Facebook is their attribution reporting is really good. At the end of the month, you can take your CRM data, export your sold data, upload you're, it. You're going to have to show me how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Super easy. Uh, I was in there the other day, I'm like, oh, what do I do with all this? Yeah. You just upload it and it'll say, hey, you sold 10 cars from people that viewed your ad. Um, it's a lot more powerful than Google's attribution. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, our, our general managers love it because we can tie sales to it. That's great. Yeah, it's a one-to-one. -one. Yep. <laughs> Fantastic. Google, they do have that capability, um, but our CRMs in the automotive space are a little bit lacking because um, Google, you can upload an offline sales just like Facebook, but you have to tie a Google Click ID to it. And right now, none of our CRMs support the Google Click ID. Salesforce does. I mean, a lot of non-automotive CRMs do. And I'm um, in talks with um, some of ours to see if we can get that implemented. That's great. Yeah, I've got no opinion on CRMs. Yeah. None whatsoever, right? <laughs> oh, Steve, you know, it's yes. not like you, it's not, you know, I mean, my goodness, that's the most you've ever shut up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> Our By ratings way, went up Steve, when he was quiet. But, I know. <laughs> we don't need no stinking banners, Steve. Hey, we don't. <laughs> That's your cue. I can't believe that we're still talking about these. I can't believe you're still watch. writing articles about it. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's it's 2018, and dealers still have these idiotic. No offense. Ro no offense. Yeah, offense intended. These ro and it's not their fault. It's usually the OEM that forces this, uh, but we put these rotating carousels on the best real estate on the homepage. Study after study from 10 years ago, from before that, show that these rotating banners don't convert. And your website has two goals, Mr. Dealer. The first is to attract visitors, and the second goal of your website is to convert those visitors into buyers, into customers. That's it. And these rotating banners uh, that people see them as 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 ads, and so they develop banner blindness. They don't they don't look at them, um, and these get very few clicks. Um, anywhere between one and five percent of total homepage clicks are on these banners, even though these banners are taking up seventy percent or more of the real estate. But um, why why is the why is the click so important on something like that? I mean, it's a banner. But it's so, what do you think it's doing? You think it's, it's you think a visual it's cue. selling? It's a visual cue for what? To 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 in this case the to upgrade to the technology of tomorrow today. Um, <laughs> I, what the hell does that mean? It's an ad. People aren't looking at it. It's a waste of space. So what do you what do you what should be there? Well, scroll down to what Dave Smith 
uh, Nissan has on theirs. Um, you know, something like what Dave Smith Nissan has. But, but here's my here's my argument. But forget the facts, right? Forget the stats of the clicks. The the here's my argument. If these things are so important, how come we get rid of them off, off on our mobile sites? Well, there's no room. Oh, wait a minute. You mean there's only room for things that help us sell cars, but there's not room for fluff, right? And then on top of that, then then why isn't why don't we have a rotating banner on every page on our website? If these things are so great, then why do we just put them on the homepage? Why not put them? Well, I, I know why we put them up. I know why we put the banners up. I know why the banners are pictures of the dealership. <laughs> I, I know exactly why. We're, we're all waiting, Jeff, with bated <laughs> breath. Because it makes the owner and the GM feel good. Yeah. But see, they feel oh, good. Yeah. You know what? These, uh, these new websites that have the video in the background, because this is a video, uh, just a picture, still picture of Dave Smith's site. But these are videos in the background, you know, the, the dealer inspire sites and others. Are that, you okay with that? I don't care about the video because it doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't just detract, uh, in my opinion, from, from the consumer visit. In this case, you can take the consumer, and I put a list of eight uh, little boxes that I would create on my website if it were my site. Um, but you, 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 know, you take the consumer right to the, what they want to see, but at the same time, you're taking them to what you want them to do, right? So, you know, get a quick quote, uh, get pre-approved, whatever it is. You're moving them through. They can see inventory with one click or do these things. Um, it's funny that we're having this discussion today. What, what about the video ones? So you mean just that when it's a background video, like a dealer inspire site, or are you talking about when they're using that real estate and putting up a video? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, that's what I wanted to do. Right. I wanted to get to, I, I went to a dealer site so I could watch it fucking move. Excuse me. A freaking movie. Oh. Right. I know you got me This is started. not a kid friendly oh show, God, it it, man. We're all car guys. Jeez. Oh, it's terrible. So, but here's the point. So that's what I did. Remember years ago when we could, uh, when you had audio playing, cause Jeff, you guys did that on some of your mile one sites, right? As soon as yeah, you came on a mile one yeah. site, you had like some country song playing in the background or something that lasted what about a week before we realized this was the dumbest thing ever to put on websites. Well, we had that little woman that she would like step out. Oh the yeah. Oh, the hey, credit, the credit the lady. She'd be like, yeah. Fill out the yeah, credit app and I'll guide you through it. Right. And what happened? We saw our bounce rates go up. Our, our, our lead counts went down, you know, our engagement went down. Consumers weren't happy. We weren't happy just because we can do something for our site. Doesn't mean we should. Right. It's two goals, attract and convert. Those are the goals. If it doesn't do one of those two oh, things, get rid of it. We should mean, experiment. What do you mean convert? Convert. Mean turn someone into convert. a buyer. I don't mean it has to be a lead. I mean. Right, okay. I want, I want to make sure that was clarified. I, I'm talking about converting them into a customer. Whether that means they drop everything and rush down because we are, we're having an oil change special or they pick up a phone and call us and buy a car. Whatever it is. But, but people do physically convert on something that they see and there's no way to measure that engagement customers use home pages though as more of a jumping off point than i think for sure yeah, because I'm, we make them use it as a jumping off point do you use the home page of other websites that way and other especially not sites you go to every day not like amazon right uh, the only ones i engage with are the ones that have the special and the product i'm actually looking for i mean the or, first thing i do as a consumer i look for the search bar and I start searching for what I want. Well, but here's here's a good point. I think. So are you making my point, Ryan, or, or not? I'm making it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, then I then I agree with you. <laughs> I I think we're all saying that we would prefer to see the homepage be more functional than pretty. Yeah. Yeah. And so, the one thing you have to look at is how much time do we spend creating these banners? I mean, we have 40 websites that we manage, 40, 50. And we'll spend the first week of the month really focusing on these banners because GM, Ford, give us bad scores if we don't have 10 custom banners. Oh, yeah. The OEM only is once. And then, yeah, and then it's the compliance day. side. You, you said the word clearance in one of them, so Honda's yeah. mad or whatever. I mean, oh, well, Chris nuts. Leslie's got a comment in here saying that he gets calls when he takes his down. Well, ours weren't spring enough. It's <laughs> bringing up. We put more yeah, flowers in there for you. Image going on. Yeah, flowers sell cars. Yeah, there you go. Ryan, you know, 
posted something, should I use a carousel? And that's the site I always go to. It's 89% of people click on the first slide. So yep. spend all this time creating 15 slides. They only look at the first one. Well, yeah, so it, most it, of those, the slides after number one, most of those get about truly 10 or fewer clicks a month on yeah. those other slides. It's not the dealer's fault. It is the OEM. It's the OEM that requires us on their website. And, uh, and you know, I wish a few OEM folks were watching uh, Refresh Friday. And one thing I do want to point out, some of our OEMs recently have suggested putting UTM tags on our um, sliders which is an absolutely horrible idea. <laughs> There's some vendors in the space that uh, really promote that, but what it does is um, if you use a UTM tag on an internal link, it duplicates your traffic. Correct. So, oh, so fantastic. Really yeah. So you can go from 3,000 visitors to 6,000. Hey, um, that sounds nice. Yeah. yeah. Look what we did for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're so still many, selling so many visitors cars? do you get when you put the gorilla on the roof? <laughs> I, th I hear it's a 30 to 40 percent increase at least what about the dancing guy he's even better <laughs> wavy arm guy yeah yeah wavy arm guy wavy arm guy yeah speaking of some cars <laughs> yeah, i'm stealing you know some stuff out of the comments over here There's some good stuff coming in yeah maybe we should put them on the show instead of me get a bigger yeah. audience yeah ratings will go way up we need that <laughs> we need that we you guys need that <laughs> All right. We're not worried about reading. We love you, Steve. We really do. Yes. <laughs> Thank goodness. I have a very because we're not brain. worried about ratings. We'll have you on again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now you're getting crazy. Speaking of your bombs and a and an S bomb. Speaking of your voice and what just wanting a little bit more of it, you have um, to wrap up the show. You've got what? What is this new website? Crutch, clutch, clutch it. K-R-U-T-C-H-I-T dot com. Uh, some car guys got together and said, you know what? We got to find a way to put consumers together with salespeople more easily, uh, especially where maybe the, the consumer can search for the salespeople at first. And then once they find them, then, they can, then that person can help them buy a car. And when you think about it from a salesperson standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. You know, when we get a referral to come in to ask for us, we make better grosses because they start with us and then work their way down to the vehicle versus starting at the vehicle and then finding the, finding the salesperson. And so um, it's just a better way to generate uh, better opportunities. It's in beta right now. I encourage every salesperson out there because it's free to join crutchit.com, use their referrals uh, or their rep review generator. You just put your emails in of your customers and it, it sends them a nice note asking them for a review. That'll build up your review base so that as Crutchit adds functionality down the road and maybe starts charging for it, you'll be free. You'll be grandfathered in to be free all the time and you'll start enjoying uh, the leads that I'm hopeful this, uh, this platform can, can deliver for you. I get pitched lots of these things, uh, probably one a month. And this is, this is uh, one of only two that, that I got pitched uh, recently that I, I really have an interest in trying to help them. So I like you, it. You really about. like this one, Steve. Yeah, you should, you should help is. get it on Carvana. Uh, there you go. Yeah, so they need sales. Yeah, so you won't find any Carvana salespeople, will you? Because it's, uh, <laughs> they don't have salespeople. So there That's you go. That's wrong, right? It is. And, and I am going to do another shameless plug. Uh, okay. If you're going to be at NADA, go to the AutoWeb booth, get a signed copy of my book, Shit Sandwich. Uh, it's a special edition that is only given away at NADA every day from 11 to 3. I'll be at the auto web booth. Is that sandwich or sandwich? Sandwich. Shit sandwich. <laughs> That's the way we talk. <laughs> Just making sure. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. You have a tan? What's, what's that? You what's... have a tan. Did you go somewhere? Did you golf or something recently? No? What are you, what are you talking you about? You look like you're tan compared to the rest no. of them. All right. Oh. Okay. It's just the lighting. Enough. You're it just pale. Lighting. You're just so it. pale. It's North Idaho pale. Exactly. It's our North Idaho tan. You have a, a little pink tone to you. It complements you. your shirt. It's like, uh, that's high blood pressure. Salmon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, are we ready to bring it to an end? Ryan started. Feeling it good. End. Feeling good. All right. I mean, I think the big point about Carvana is, I mean. 
the first movers aren't always the winners. It's usually the fast followers. Like back oh, when, so yeah, back, it's a yeah, good like point. when the pioneers went, you know, through the Oregon Trail and created that. A lot of them died from <laughs> some pretty horrible diseases. <laughs> but the, I thought you were going to talk about my show things. right now. Yeah, but it's the followers that followed behind them, you know, went through their ruts and they got great success from learning from their mistakes. And I think that's what a lot of dealers have to do is learn from the mistakes of these Carvana and firms. Sit back, chill, learn. He's the youngest one on the show, but he's the wisest, folks. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. He has not shown right. as many brain cells as we have. <laughs> well, join us uh, next week. When I won't be on. When you won't be on, for sure. Better show. <laughs> I won't mess up in the beginning. Terrible. Oh, yeah. shit. How many sites do we live stream this to? <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> yeah, you All better right. go delete one of those somewhere. Yeah, I, know. I did. <laughs> Good. All Good. right. See everybody soon. Still employed Bye, next Jeff. week. We'll be on on Friday. Thanks. For, thank Dr oh. Ryan, really. Thanks. Ryan, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Steve, thank you as well. No, thank you. No, and we'll have you guys one again soon. This was great. Talk soon. Yep, sure. Thanks, fellas.